Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to instantiate a UI object in Unity, move it around, and destroy it. So, in my game manager simulator, I have symbols on the bottom that you match to the top, and based on that matching, I instantiate an object, and then I move it in the direction that you click. So, for this example, these two match, so I'm going to file it away, and you can see that I'm actually instantiating an object, moving it, and then destroying it. Same with the trash can. And I'm going to show you how to do that little animation today. Quite frankly, I don't so care about your actually, children. Actually, when you instantiate an object, it's going to show up in your scene at the bottom. But because it's a UI element, it actually needs to be child of a canvas. So in this case, I want the spawned object to be a child of my main match game canvas. And then after that, you can set the location of the instantiated object and then move it. So let me show you the code for this. And I'm going to put the code in the comments, but basically I'm just going to go step by step and show you the code. So the first thing is my game object player image match is the lower box that I'm matching to the upper box. It just gives my instantiated object a location to initially start at. Second, I have the action buttons. I have the trash can on the left and the file folder on the right. And once my instantiated object goes either too far left or too far right, I want it to destroy. That's why I have my action buttons here as an input. This part is just to set the correct sprite. And then lastly, I have the, the prefab that I'm actually going to instantiate. And I have the canvas object that I plan to make the instantiated object a child of. Now, when I click my buttons, if I click the left button, it runs this function. And if I click the right button, it runs this function. At least right now, now this isn't the full code. I've kind of just pared it down to the things that you really need. Okay, now we're gonna to get to the meat and potatoes of it, of the actual instantiation portion. So when I instantiate and I call this code routine, I'm going to pass in a float direction and a symbol. Now you can see here that if it's checking true, which is the file folder, it's setting the direction to positive one. And if it's checking false here, it's setting the direction to negative one. That's because when I click the trash can, I want the object to go left. And when I click the file folder, I want the object to go right. Now the player int portion here just allows me to set the correct sprite for the object that I'm instantiating so that I know if it's a floppy disk, a computer, or a fax machine. So now that I've explained the inputs to my coroutine, let's go through line my line. So first things first is I get the rectangular transform of the player symbol transform for the image that I'm matching to. So in this case, if I go back to Unity and I start Please the game, match the objects this before you is go home. The transform for this image right here. So let's go ahead and pause this so I can just go back to the code. So rectangular transform player symbol transform equals player image match dot get component rectangular transform. Again player image match is this lower symbol here. Now, if I go to the next line, I have the spawn location, and the spawn location is a new vector three, and it's just the player transform, local position X, local position Y, local position Z. This is basically setting up that I'm, when I do my instantiate, I want the new symbol to instantiate right on top of this symbol right here. Okay, now I'm gonna set my game object flying symbol, which is the one I'm gonna instantiate. I'm gonna instantiate it. I'm gonna instantiate the player image prefab, which is the, the actual prefab of that image that I want to exist and fly and move. I'm gonna set the spawn location to the spawn location that I discussed that lower image, and then I have this quaternion.identity that's just setting the rotation. 
Now, important thing here, I'm going to set the flying symbol as a child object of my main object transform. This needs to be exactly as I have it here. So what that's going to do is I'm going to instantiate my game object. It's going to show up in my hierarchy down here. The next thing it's going to do is it's going to take that symbol and it's going to put it as a child object of this canvas. And you can see I have a canvas here. Extremely important because Otherwise, it won't actually put the symbol at the correct location. Now, after I have instantiated it and I've set it as a child, I'm actually going to grab the rectangular transform of the object that I just instantiated. That's just so I can access the position of that rectangular transform. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the flying symbol location. This is going to basically just be the spawn location. So, what I'm doing here is I'm making a new vector 3 and it's just the spawn location x, spawn location y, spawn location z. You can kind of not have to do this. I just did it for clarity. In my particular case, I found it a little bit easier. Now, the next big thing that's important here is I'm going to set the local position of my flying symbol transform to the flying symbol location. So what I've done here, I'm going to kind of backtrack here so it's really clear. I've instantiated my flying symbol. I've set it as a child component. Now I'm going to reset the flying symbol location to the original spawn location. Now, this part here, this image flying symbol image, is just getting the image component of your newly instantiated object so I can change it. Whatever image you want to set it to, you have to get the image component so that you can set that image. This part here, all this is doing is setting that image and it's based on this input here, symbol. You can see that I'm just checking the symbol and setting the sprite for it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is because I want my symbol to fly to the left or to the right, and I want it to destroy once it gets to the trash can or the file image, I actually need to get the rectangular transform of the left button, which is my trash can, false button transform is my trash can, or the right button, true button transform, which is my file location. You can see here, trash can is the left false, file is the right true left, false, right, true. That will just let me do a comparison so I can check my flying image location against this static location. And that's what I'm going to do here. So this max min location, if I'm flying to the left, my max min location is just going to be equal to the false button transform locations local position x, local position y, local position z of the false button transform. But if the direction is positive, it's going to my max min location is going to set to the true button local position, which is again, it's the file position on the right, so it's going to fly right. Imagine here what I'm doing is I'm just setting a point in space to check against that if my flying newly instantiated symbol is going to the left. It, if it goes less than the trash can, I can destroy it. And if it's going to the right, if it's greater than the file folder, I can destroy it. That's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to set a location to compare against. Okay, now I'm going to move the symbol. I like to think of these things as time-based. So I want the whole move sequence to happen in 0.1 seconds. Based on that, I'm going to make a speed, and that speed is going to be the difference in x location between my flying symbol location, where it starts, the spawn location basically, and the max min location. So it's delta x. I'm taking the absolute value so I don't have a negative, and I'm dividing by that by move time. That's just getting me a velocity. So. Next part is, 
if direction is to the left, if my flying symbol location dot x is greater than my maxmin location dot x, then I want to keep moving my flying symbol location. So that's why I have flying symbol location dot x equals flying symbol location dot x plus the direction times the speed times time dot delta time. This is just setting the vector and this is setting the actual uh, instant. Yield return null is just going to advance the frame one frame. So because this is a coroutine, you can use a while loop. You can make it go frame by frame, move the symbol, go to the next frame, move the symbol, go to the next frame. So that's what I'm doing here. Now, if direction is positive, while my flying symbol location at dot x is less than my max min location, so while my flying symbol is to the left of my file folder, I'm going to keep moving it. Flying symbol location, the new location x, equals the old location x plus the direction times the time times the speed. And then I'm going to set the local position to the new position and I'm going to advance one frame. Now, once this is no longer true, once my flying symbol goes too far to the right and passes the file folder, it's going to quit this while loop and it's going to destroy the symbol. So again, I can show you what that looks like here. So as I instantiate the symbol here, it goes to the right. Once it hits the file folder, it deletes itself. All of the code will be in the comments. I hope it's helpful. I hope it makes sense. Reply in the comments if you felt like this video was helpful. And check out my games, uh, Manager Simulator. And I have another one that's a puzzle platformer called Boris the Sloth. Thank you.